and the deputy town treasurer. And I just want to read to you um, this piece that our town attorney gave me about the role of the deputy supervisor that pertains to tonight's meeting. Uh, during the absence of the supervisor, deputy supervisor shall preside at the meetings of the town board and shall be vested with the powers and may perform all the duties of the supervisor under this chapter or any law, except that he shall have no vote in his capacity as deputy supervisor on matters uh, for the town board. Um, Renee Rotundo is out of town uh, for a family funeral today, so he asked me to step in uh, and play this role. So I want to call the meeting to order. And um, as always, we would like to start the meeting with Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. I hope, this, hope it's been good to you and to uh, those you love. Um, anyone who uh, wants to speak during the public comment period, um, if you're here and, and um, you want to speak, there's a sign-in sheet. If you're attending via Zoom or Facebook, you can leave a note and we will read it um, on your behalf. Um, we want to start with uh, next have a moment of silence for two uh, people who recently died. Um, a longtime member of our community, uh, Frederick Prindell, and um, a longtime member of the community who um, still has family and friends uh, here, Thomas Flynn. So if we could have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to uh, have a presentation now regarding um, from Seaboard uh, Tier 3 Solar Project um, regarding an application for zoning overlay consideration. This is their initial presentation to the board. Uh, there will not be an opportunity here for public comment or Q&A. Of course, there will be uh, all the time needed for board members to ask questions and make comments. At the end of that presentation, we will consider uh, scheduling uh, a meeting uh, of um, what's the public hearing. Thank you. A public hearing. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Where the town, where members of the uh, town can ask questions and make comments. So, with that, turning it over to our presenter. All the board members help. I want to put over here so I think we're going to see help you with that. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's a very good idea because then everybody on the board see that. Yes, I can the paper for us. Is there any way that we can focus the camera on that? Yeah, one 
maybe emails on this. So it's me. My name is Bennett Ramsey, and this is Ryan Clark. We're both with Seaboard Solar, and this is Bill Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and he is with Wendell Companies. Uh, Seaboard Solar is a solar development company that has been in business for over 10 years, and we are based in New Milford, Connecticut. We're a small hands-on company of about 12 people. However, despite being a smaller company, we do have a portfolio that would rival one of a larger corporate company. We have about over 300 megawatts in total and over 100 in the state of New York currently. We're here tonight to seek inclusion into the solar overlay, our solar project located at 7,000 Frank Long Road. The project would be located on a subdivided lot of 68 and a half acres. This would be subdivided out of three parcels that total 240 acres currently. The tier three project would be five megawatts and we would be using about 30 acres of those 68 and a half acres, leaving the rest as green space. I'm sorry, one. leaving the rest as green space. Is that to the west or the east of your of the photograph? Yeah. It's surrounding the array on both sides throughout. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna ask if you need um, to hear better, please ask and we'll, Make sure that voices are loud enough. Um, and uh, reminding you that Q and A is for the next time. I don't think you'll have a problem hearing me. I'm a pretty loud guy. <laughs> um, so uh, Wendell Companies has been around for decades. Um, 14, 14 different offices, approximately 270 employees. Um, we've been doing solar work for. The last four or five years now um, have a, a very large um, portfolio under our belt uh, in terms of experience. Um, and Seaboard Solar came to us with this project, and we have uh, helped them get through initial design work for a specific project. There's chairs over there if you need some more chairs to sit in. I'm, off the pile. I'm sorry. Just see. That was it, actually. You didn't cut me off. <laughs> All right. So we've obviously given you a whole lot of materials to go through. And rather than touching on anything ourselves right now, we'd like to open it up for questions and uh, answer the questions that you have for us. Hey, your guys' names again, just so I make sure. Of course. Bill Anterline, A-N-T-E-R-L-I-N-E. -E. Wendell Collins. Wendell with one L. Wendell? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Bennett Ramsey with Seaboard Solar. Um, Ryan Clark, Seaboard Solar. I guess um, maybe to uh, open this up, um, we can mention that um, we had previously been in front of the planning board and uh, a couple of contingencies that were to be addressed uh, in order to come to this meeting. Um, one of those was to check into the percentage of prime farmland uh, that is being uh, utilized by our project. This, this diagram right here. As you can see there, and I also had a panel up here. Oh, yeah, the dark group. Uh, so we know that uh, by law we are not supposed to infringe on a, a site that has and, and used more than 50% of the prime farmland within the parcel. Um, as you can see on our map here, as well as in front of you, uh, the project itself, the 30.2 acres out of the 68.5, uh, we are only infringing upon 48.9%, so we are under the 50% threshold. Uh, that was one of the one of the things that needed to be addressed in order to uh, be here at this meeting. And uh, we also needed to provide the meets and bounds of the proposed subdivision. Correct. And that was the other one that's provided, which I handed out to you. Well, I'm sorry, I missed that. It's a subdivision plan with the meets and bounds. 
labels on it. What's the total projected cost of the project? Including construction? Yes. I believe it would be north of $12 million. And so am I right that most projects are like 90% labor, or 90% materials, 10% labor? Is that about right? Research I've done. It depends. Um, I would say about 75% for this project would go to- 75% materials. I both, and, and labor as well. So I, I can provide that breakdown for you. Okay. Um, I, I don't know the total breakdown. Well, because where I'm going with this is, so I'm assuming, but it still puts the labor cost component of it in north of probably a million dollars. So that's unreasonable. Because one of the things I'm always struggling with is if the if the labor to put this up is a million dollars, and then 20 years from now or 25 years from now, which that number would then, if you just inflated it two percent, you come up with like 1.7 million dollars. But the decommissioning bond, according to what you've submitted, is 379 thousand dollars. Is that right? Correct. And that just concerns me. You know, it seems like. I, I realize that it may not take the same amount of labor to take it down that it needs to put it up, but there's also additional costs like getting rid of the panels, all of which has to be included in that three hundred seventy nine dollars. So that's that's a concern um, to me. That's one thing. Um, as far as seeker, you guys have been made aware that we have a huge drainage problem under ninety one. Right. Yes, we have. And do you know specifically? I, I I've heard the word that we're going to mitigate it, but do you know specifically how to mitigate it? The initial the initial approach would be to uh, provide a on site permanent stormwater detention pond. Correct. Right. Um, so I mean, it's a pond. So in layman terms, it's a pond. Um, the idea is to capture the stormwater that's running across the site before it leaves the site. So you can slow down the amount of water that's leaving your site at any one time. That way the project isn't contributing to the flooding that may be happening downstream. So, as I actually said, I have some more specific questions. So an attention button is going to be need to be downstream of the project. On the downstream end of the project. It has to be, right? Because it has to outlet. You have to flow. You have to, you have to catch the difference between what was there right. before and what is. If you were to put it at the upstream end, you would be capturing water that has nothing to do with the project. Exactly. So my concern is, and maybe you can get the other map out that shows the project. If you were to have to put what's probably going to be a very large detention pond to the west of the project, which is on the downhill side, that's just... It looks to me like if I was to look at it,